then I allowed myself to just let go of everything because I remember thinking, why can't people just get along? Why, why is it so hard? What does it take just to simply get along? We were saying how very important it is to bring about in the human mind the radical revolution. The crisis is a crisis in consciousness, a crisis that cannot anymore accept the old norms, the old patterns, the ancient traditions. And considering what the world is now, with all the misery, conflict, destructive brutality, aggression, and so on, man, he is still as he was, he is still brutal, violent, aggressive, acquisitive, competitive, and he has built a society along these lines. Now in our culture we've been trained for individual differences to stand out. So you look at each person, the immediate kid is brighter, dumber, older, younger, richer, poorer, and we make all these dimensional dis distinctions, put them in categories and treat them that way. And we get so that we only see others as separate from ourselves in the ways in which they're separate. And one of the dramatic characteristics of experience is being with another person and suddenly seeing the ways in which they are like you, not different from you and experiencing the fact that which is essence in you and which is essence in me is indeed one. The understanding that there is no other. It is all one. So I was just born as a human being and then I learned this whole business of who I am and whether I'm good or bad or achieving or not, all that's learned along the way, you know, and all they could see were the problems and the fears of society, but none of the potential, none of the positive questions about what is man to do next. They're not even interested in that. They are so committed to the fact that this society is the way it is and that's all you can expect. And that's what I, I call vested interest in the ongoing game. And if you have vested interest in the ongoing game, you are frightened by anything that might change it.
look we now know there is enough to go around all right in other words if we could truly collaborate with our fellow man there would be enough to go around for the world but none of us can break through our own models of the way the game goes enough to do the things necessary to bring about that realization and it's only when there is enough that we can become back to we both of us as subject and experience the unity when we are truly collaborative about our resources man has come out of the jungle where there wasn't enough and where he fought for it and he's built a whole ethic around not having enough and now to be able to really shift that ethic is a very you know and the whole motivational pattern connected with it is a very difficult thing for him to do Why don't you change? What prevents you? But ask that question most seriously and deeply. What's your answer? Why don't you change? What prevents you? You can do anything you want. You are bound by nothing. What are you passionate about? We go through life with our antennas bouncing off one another continuously on ant autopilot with nothing really human required of us. Stop, go, walk here, drive there. All action basically for survival, all communication simply to keep this ant colony buzzing along in an efficient, polite manner. Here's your change. Paper or plastic? Credit or debit? You want ketchup with that? I don't want a straw. I want real human moments. I want to see you. I want you to see me. I don't want to give that up. I don't want to be an ant, you know? I did my career on my own terms, and I don't know how many people get to do that anymore. Uh -huh. I think there are too many expectations, there are too many pathways and rules, and, and true rebels don't seem to be around very much. So what would you say to a 20-year-old then? What would you say? I, I would say do, do what you love, do it well, and if people pat you on the back for it, you got it. The, the right. secret to happiness is finding something you love and doing it well and then being recognized for it. Someone, even if it's one person who says you're doing a great job, or if it's applause, but those three things together. I said to my wife at that time when I changed, I said, you know, even if I only filled coffee houses three days a week for the rest of my life, I'd be happy doing that. And when you let go of goals and stuff, I, I mean the, the attachment to goals, that's when things come to you. You should have a name point, but not a thing like that. Everybody's running around trying to save the planet. Yeah. The planet doesn't need that. The planet will take care of itself. People are selfish, and that's what they're doing, is trying to save the planet for themselves to have a nicer place to live. They don't care about the planet. People think nature is outside of them. They don't take into them the idea that we are part of it. They say, oh, we're going for a nature walk. We're going to the country because we like nature. Nature's in here. And if you're in tune with it, like the Indians, the Hopis especially, the balance of life, the balance, the harmony of nature, if you understand that, you don't overbuild. It's a symphony. Everybody's in the band, you know? It's not just one, it's not just one group. People, are, people want their goodies. They want their toys. Everybody wants the newest gizmo. We're, we're, we're slaves to gizmos and toys. Everybody wants a cell phone that'll make pancakes, and I think that'll make them happy. Yeah. There are places that are going to... Find your passion and follow it. And if there is anything I have learned in my life, you will not find that passion in things. And you will not find that passion in money. Because the more things and the more money you have, the more you will just look around and use that as the metric, and there will always be someone with more. That passion will be grounded in people. 
and it will be grounded in the relationships you have with people and what they think of you when your time comes. We are actually soft-wired to actually experience another's plight as if we are experiencing ourselves. But mirror neurons are just the beginning of a whole range of research going on in neuropsychology and brain research and in child development that suggests that we are actually soft-wired not for aggression and violence and self-interest and utilitarianism, that we are actually soft-wired for sociability, attachment, as John Bowlby might have said, affection, companionship, and that the first drive is the drive to actually belong. What we are trying in all these discussions and talks here is to see if we cannot radically bring about a transformation of the mind. Not accept things as they are. but to understand it, to go into it, to examine it. Give your heart and your mind with everything that you have to find out, a way of living differently. But that depends on you and not somebody else. Because in this there is no teacher, no pupil. There is no leader. There is no guru. There is no master, no saviour. You yourself are the teacher and the pupil, you are the master, you are the guru, you are the leader. You are everything. And to understand is to transform what is. They are afraid of new ideas. They're loaded with prejudices, not based upon anything in reality, but based on if something is new, I reject it immediately because it's frightening to me. What they do instead is just stay with the familiar. You know, to me, the most beautiful things in all the universe are the most mysterious.